Oh my God, it's Wednesday night. We have a crazy people talking sports. Yeah, man, crazy. <laughs> I think it's gonna get weird. Real weird. <laughs> we got, uh, I mean, this is so much great TV this summer. There's Game of Thrones. Sure. The Handmaid's Tale, uh -huh. the Cavs. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Things are not going well for them. No, if that show comes back next season, different cast. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's, uh, you know, Chauncey Billups, he was offered the sure. GM job. Mm -hmm. He said no, because I think he thought it was a bit of a sinking ship. Right. We're actually out to him to be our showrunner. Really? We haven't heard back yet. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I'm optimistic. Uh -huh. Cool. Yeah, you know, they just signed Derrick Rose. Yeah. 2.1 million. You know, look, you gotta look at the positives in the Knicks offseason. We haven't signed any aging superstars. <laughs> sure, that's a good call. Yeah. Maybe bring back Herb Williams. Yeah. Yeah. This is a big show today. Yeah, this is huge, man. Can you guess who the guest is based on my attire? Ah, uh, Stefan Marbury? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. This guy right here. Yeah, man. Yeah, Starks, baby. baby. Yeah. Starks, 90s Knicks. That's yeah. what it's all about. <laughs> yep. My childhood. Sure, I mean, maybe we don't want to dive all the way into there. But, uh, <laughs> just keep it, you this know. This is my old childhood jersey, still fits. <laughs> I haven't filled out yet. <laughs> we got John Starks on People Talking Sports coming up next. We're back on People Talking Sports with New York basketball legend, John Starks. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thank you for having me. So good to have you here. We're talking about the Knicks this year. Uh, I mean, Tim Hardaway Jr., have any of these guys come to you for advice? <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they should. I hear that, that no one asked yeah. you or Walt or any of these guys, you know, proven guys who could win mm -hmm. for advice. I'm like, why are they not doing that? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> but these, these guys, uh, I think, uh, obviously having uh, Hardaway back, he's familiar with the team, familiar with the city, and hopefully this time around, you know, he can uh, produce a little bit more. Your team really kind of reflected the city. Mm -hmm. there, was, there was a toughness. You and Mason and Oak and Ewing and Harper. I mean, you guys, I just remember you and Oakley constantly diving for mm -hmm. loose balls in the crowd. Yeah. That's kind of lost on this generation a little bit. Well, uh, you know, the team that we had was a, a blue collar team and a hard nosed team. And, you know, we had to fight and scrap for every win that we got out there on the court. And so uh, it's a little different now. I think the rules probably changed guys' mentality. It's, uh, it's not as aggressive of a league as it was back then. You know, you had to fight your way in this league. I remember coming in and it seemed like every night you're almost thinking about getting into a fight because <laughs> just to get your respect. And that's just the way it is. Now I think the respect is given to you. You know, you, it, it's such a young league right now. So it's a little different. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of earning your spot, not just getting your spot. I like when a rookie isn't just started when they have mm -hmm. to like fight and get their spot in the rotation because then it feels earned. It pushes you to understand that, you know, no matter what you do, you know, this could be your last go around. And so I always kept that in the back of my mind, you know, no matter if I did, you know, become successful in the league, I always thought that it could end the next day. So it That's good. how I feel about my comedy career. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a good job right now, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, like I say, the league is just such a young league. And when I came in, probably the average age of a team is probably about 26, 27, 28, somewhere around in there. Now it's like 22, 21. It's a younger team. It always seems like you're building toward the future. Then it was like you were built, you were living in the now. You could buy a player's jersey and the player might still be. I'm, I'm wearing your jersey, yeah. if you can't tell. It's not a Thank Marbury. Thank you for that, yeah. <laughs> uh, but... I just got my payment anyway on that, so I <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> so, I mean, there was a time when it, it was your guy, it was your team, you know, and like, and as you said, your team reflected us. There's something, of being, you know, being a fan where there's no permanence in, in the player, there's no loyalty. It, it, it's kind of lost, I think. Yeah, it is lost, and, and you hate to see that, you know, going on in the league, you know, because I, I call it the AU effect. That's what guys do now, you know, they want to go play with their friends, and that's just the way it is right now. So uh, it's tougher on the fans because you want to buy that jersey and you hope that that guy will be there for a, a long stretch of, uh, of time with that team, but it's not that way no more. Story about you, uh, the team, you, you beat L.A., you're on mm -hmm. a flight back. Things got a little yeah, tough. Yeah, it did get a little tough. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were celebrating, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Interpret we, that however you want. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, but we were celebrating on the way back, you know, and, and we used to, um, you know, L.A. from L.A. to New York is about a six-hour flight. Right. So you, you tend to have some spirits, <laughs> uh, let's just put it like that, and, and things got out of hand, actually. Uh, I can remember um, I was a little, you know, over the top, and uh, I shouldn't be telling you this, man. I, I, I really shouldn't, but I, I'm going to tell you anyway. But anyway, we was playing around, and I can remember Mace, God rest his soul, he was playing around, he had a bottle, and he was like playing, tapping the bottle, and actually he hit me <laughs> right here and split my head, and I didn't know. Oh my That's God. how I like, you know, I was, I was over the top, but uh, <laughs> blood Mason hit you in the head with the bottle. He hit me in the head with the bottle. He was playing around, <laughs> and he didn't know he hit me. I didn't know he hit me. <laughs> and blood was just gushing. They like, man, your head is split. I went to go look in the mirror. I like, oh man, Mace, what are you doing? After that, roused no more nothing on the plane. So we had just water and juice. <laughs> That's why you guys were such good defenders. That was your teammate. Who did yeah, that, that was my you. teammate. Yeah. What's he gonna do to Chicago? <laughs> I know exactly, exactly. My favorite was to watch you against Reggie because I hated Reggie the most. I yeah. mean, everybody he... did. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> I mean, I remember when you headbutt him, and it's still one of the most bittersweet moments yeah. because we were all like, "Yes, he got him." Then we're yeah. like, "God, we lost Starks." That needed to happen. <laughs> no matter what, that needed to happen. Just because. Like I say, back then, you had to fight and you had to earn your respect from other players in this league. You know, it wasn't given to you. And so, uh, Reggie was one of those players that he didn't, he didn't respect you. You know what I mean? If he didn't respect you, he's going to come at you. He's going to talk noise. He's going to do all the dirty little things. And that particular time, I can remember he kept hitting me with bowls uh, during the playoffs game. And he was, I think it was game three. He hit me with a bow, and I told the referee, and the referee wasn't, Stark, shut up and play. i like, okay, I know, I, I can handle this. And so Patrick said, you cool? I said, yeah, I'm cool. So I ran down, scored on him, and ran up to court, and I was so mad. I mean, like, oh, man, I wanted to just take my fist and just put it right through his face, right? <laughs> and uh, just, you know, I'm talking to him, you know, in a polite way. And we just got close, and I just, bam! I'm like, just some just came up and tapped him like that, and he know he dramatic Hollywood. <laughs> oh, you be like, this and that, and I can remember Oak and Patrick just beating on me, and I didn't feel them until after the game, and when I saw the replay, and they was hitting me, bam, bam, bam. My mother called Patrick and told him, if you ever put your hands on my son again. <laughs> and he told, he said, Miss Starks, if he do that again, I'm going to do the same thing. So. Reggie, that was one. I mean, Jordan was another one. Yeah. Do you right. stay in he touch with him? He was a nightmare. Yeah. Jordan was a nightmare to go. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, we used to get scouting reports on certain guys. And you look at the scouting report, and they say, well, you can take your right hand away, take your left hand away, push him this way, push him that way. On him, it's just like, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So he was, he was, he was special in that way, yeah. yeah. Plus, you, he had a wheel like no other player that I ever played against. It, certain guys I can get to mentally, but him I could never get to mentally. And believe me, I tried my best. But, you know, he was that special player that you couldn't break his wheel. You know, yeah. if anything, you're just taking them to another level. You do you know? do you remember, you don't have to say the guy's name, but is there anyone you remember kind of breaking? Uh, oh, yes, yeah, a lot of guys in the league back then I used to get to all the time because I had old Ken Patrick behind me. So <laughs> 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 I could talk and buck up to anybody, you know? <laughs> Yeah. Do you, like what kind of what kind of stuff would you say to someone? I can't tell you this. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sitting down with us. Uh, we got more with John Starks on the panel coming up next. <laughs> Welcome back to People Talking Sports. We have an amazing panel today. First off, the only person to dunk over Jordan who's not a monster, <laughs> John Starks. <laughs> uh, Anthony DeVito up next. Today is his Aunt Bev's birthday. Hi, Aunt Bev. <laughs> love you, Aunt Bev. Well, Sam, I don't know about love. <laughs> uh, wow. I'm trying to boost From the profile. You, Come all. on. Yeah, all right. yeah. I'm sorry. I tried. Yeah, a thing going. That just, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, after McGregor, he's Mayweather's next opponent. <laughs> You're going down, Mayweather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The incorrigible Joe Mackey. <laughs> The Kyrie news will not stop. This is now the newest story. I guess Stephen A. Smith broke it. Uh, LeBron calls this fake news the report that he wants to throw down and fight Kyrie Irving. 
<laughs> Would that be a fight? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the ha yeah, handles don't come in handy in a no, fist fight, no, right? No, no, not at all, not at all. Would you do this, if you demanded a trade from the 90s, Knicks, would you do this to you? Uh, if there I wouldn't was social so. media? No, I wouldn't think so. I wouldn't think so. No, he'd just come over and just slap me or something like that, <laughs> and uh, I'd get come to my senses and come on back. <laughs> yeah. So you don't, I mean, this is, what do you think of this? Well, you know, if he's if he's unhappy, he's unhappy. You know, in this game right here, you have to be in a place where you you know you feel comfortable and where you want to be at. And so, if he want to go, then he wants to go. The players' association has to step in here and say you can't beat up other players to get them to resign with your team. That's <laughs> that's not. We don't want that in the league. <laughs> And you'd be a great owner. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, he is nice, right? <laughs> well, I'm pretty talented. <laughs> I, I mean, I just said nice. I mean, we got <laughs> we got John Starks on the panel. I mean, all star six man defensive team. You, you know must all be very, my stats, man. I'm you must be excited uh, to meet me. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I am. I'm like. <laughs> Great to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is, uh, this is one of the things, you know, I remember uh, Jordan punched yeah. Steve Kerr in yeah. practice because they had a disagreement. Right. You know, can you imagine if Pippen demanded a trade? He would wake up in a bathtub with a scar over his kidney. Yeah. And say, you can leave, but your kidney's yeah. staying right here. Pippen's, uh, Pippen's nose would look worse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, I kind of like the culture of, of at least giving it a shot with the team. And to me, I, I get Kyrie's need to leave, but also to, to be the guy. But yeah. I also think if you're guaranteed a road to the finals every year, and with LeBron on that team, you yeah. are. It's hard, to, it's hard to picture turning that down for maybe being traded to the Phoenix Suns and not even making the eighth seed. Well, you know, guys want their their star to stay here. You right. know what I mean? And obviously, being wherever LeBron is, he's gonna, always going to be the man. And just like Durant went to uh, Oakland, and he became the man. And everybody was talking about Steph and, and Clay second. And so, you know, these guys are young. Kyrie is still young. And, and so he feels like he has a lot more to offer. And, so when you have that inside of you, you know, you tend to, you know, want to make moves. True. Do, do the Knicks get him, do you think? He said he wanted to. You, know, you know, I can't talk about it, but, you know. <laughs> 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 Kevin Durant got into it with a fan on Twitter. A fan said that he's named his dog Durant after Durant, and sure. the dog left him. Like Durant. <laughs> oh, man, that's cold. Yeah. Well, maybe, that's look, cold. maybe your dog didn't think you had a good shot at winning in your home, and he went to a more luxurious home. Maybe that's possible, <laughs> right? Could be. The fool could be better next door. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> a home with more weapons. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> maybe there was another dog at the house that ate the food first at playoff time. <laughs> I like that one. That was very confusing. That was a good one. <laughs> the dog was named Westbrook. Yeah. Oh, wow. hey, no. At first I just thought you were talking about a real dog. I was like, oh, that's fine too, you know? I'll talk dogs all day if you want. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of funny that this guy thinks he's burning Kevin Durant, but really he's just being like, my dog left me. That's how I they put the emoji on that and it, it like hits you right there, man. <laughs> man, I feel bad for that guy. Wow. Who knew that was your soft spot? Yeah, I know, I know, man. I know. He guarded emojis. Jordan and Reggie, yeah. but the, the poop emoji cuts yeah. him right to the yeah, core. Cuts me right to the core. It's like embarrassing, man. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I do like when the players talk trash on social media. Like they have the whole thing with Chandler Parsons. Do you remember that? No. Chandler Parsons shoots an air ball, and the Portland Trailblazers show the clip kind of mocking him, and he said, uh -huh. see you guys in the lottery next year. And then they say, we, CJ McCollum writes, we won the lottery by not signing you. Wow. wow. Cold-blooded. Wow, that's pretty good. Wow. I kind of like that. McCollum's a pretty good writer. Which, <laughs> think, about, think about a job. <laughs> you are replaceable. OK. <laughs> Coming back with more and people talking sports right after this break. Imagine we're playing basketball and I'm guarding you. Throw me some examples, some of, some of the trash talk you would throw my way. <laughs> I'm guarding you. You couldn't guard a couch. Like an example is like, hey, nice beard, you jerk. Your mom is so fat that she is making a sinkhole in the stands right now. 
My mom passed away three weeks ago. You are a skinny, ugly white dude. I'm gonna back you down and dunk on your ass. Um, skinny? Am I unattractive? You're an attractive guy. Thank you, sir, I appreciate it. Maybe we'll kiss after this. Women very rarely say nice things to me. <laughs> I'm not surprised. What would be your sports nickname? How about Sarah the Mean Girl? <laughs> it's uh, Joe List. Uh, huh. Meanest trash talker. You said Peyton or, or Barkley? Probably Peyton. Peyton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Would Peyton do research or anything like that? Uh, no, he's just inside of him. He's from Oakland, so you know right. he had to do a lot of trash talking on the streets yeah. of Oakland. So he just got it inside of him. He just naturally liked to talk, I guess. <laughs> Derek Rose agrees to a one-year contract with the Cleveland Cavaliers. This is big. Apparently, the, the Lakers also courted him. It said, sources say, Rose spent three hours meeting in L.A. Most of the meeting was just the Lakers showing him a picture of LeVar Ball and, <laughs> and Lonzo Ball saying, this young boy will play more than you, and his dad will make fun of you the entire time. Are you interested? <laughs> do, do you like this for the Cavs? I can't say. <laughs> I can't say. Um, I'm they probably preparing for Kyrie leaving, I guess, yeah. and bringing Rose in, I guess. So, who knows? I would happily make that trade as a as a Nick fan. I would take Kyrie for Derrick Rose if we can get him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why like people are talking about how this creates another Cavs super team, and it's like, yeah, maybe five years ago with Derrick Rose. <laughs> but that's like if you bought a flip phone now and you were like, oh, my life is really gonna change. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. <laughs> It's like a super team, like Batman's a superhero, because Derrick Rose is going to need a lot of gadgets <laughs> to get him through the season because he really doesn't have any superpowers anymore. <laughs> this is a long setup, I know. But just stay with it. Because he, gets, he keeps getting injured, and he's going to need a utility belt to dunk. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> You stuck the landing. Yeah, you I stuck think. the landing. We got you on that. Yeah, yeah. You got you. You got you. Stressful. Yeah, I understand. The new dunk craze is taking over suburban neighborhoods. The drive-by dunk, we're going to show some of these. Drive-by dunk. Yeah, drive-bys are different I in the suburbs. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah, people are just driving I think I'm up. rating these dunks. Right? You're rating yeah. these. Yeah, how many Starks would you give that right there? Oh, that was nice. That was not uh, yeah, bad. Yeah, right? that was nice. I'd probably give him about a three on that. A three? All yeah, right, three, three out of five. Three, not three. bad. See that one. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that was real weak. He that was weak. zero. <laughs> zero start. In the rain. Oh, yeah, that's a five. That's a five right there if I had never seen one. You know, in some cultures, dunking on another man's rim is more disrespectful than sleeping with his wife. <laughs> Just what something culture, I read. What culture is that? <laughs> I don't know. What culture are you looking at? Oh, good try. Uh, that is a, uh, yeah, you better get out of there. That's about a two. Get him, dog. Get him, dog. That's a pit, too. That is Montgomery Burns' place. Oh, this oh, is a good one. That's, 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 that's a five and a half. <laughs> yeah. Let's go a six. Can we go a ten? Yeah, we get a ten on that one. Yeah, it's yeah. your scale. You know? <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll take a ten then. <laughs> well, this has been a lot of fun. John, thank you so much for joining yeah, us, man. So much fun. My pleasure. Coming up next, uh, The List with Liz Gonzalez. Stick around. <laughs> and we're back with Liz Gonzalez and The List. Yeah. You know what we're talking about today? I do not. What is it? Oh, well, you should have been prepared, <laughs> like I am. We're talking about sports' greatest mysteries, the unknowns. And we're going to kick things off right off the bat with Jim Harbaugh and the 49ers. What really happened between these two? We know there was a lot of issues with the front office, namely Jed York. But before he got there, they missed the playoffs for eight consecutive years. He got there. They went to three NFC Championship games and a Super Bowl. Whatever happened, it was bad enough to send him out of the NFL and into the arms of Michigan. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't understand. What's the mystery, you know? He left town for a girl, a little lady named Ann Arbor. <laughs> <laughs> more of those where that came from on this list today, man. Hey, more of those. The real estate was expensive. <laughs> 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 well, apparently San Francisco just doesn't like to win. Um, next up, uh, let's all remember the guy Manti Teo, the ex-Notre Dame superstar who allegedly fell in love with a woman online, dated her for a long time, then she apparently just passed away from leukemia, the same disease that got his grandmother 
But then we found out later that I guess she never really existed and all of this was made up. He says it was some sort of sick joke. I'm not buying this. This guy actually got famous because he was the one that managed to play through the pain of losing his grandmother and his girlfriend. I just can't believe anybody would be that gullible. There's no mystery here. I've been catfished a baker's dozen times <laughs> by, by a number of people proclaiming to be my girlfriend on the internet. How's that worked out for you? Not good. No, no, not good. But it's caused me hours of entertainment. I've actually been uh, whitefished. Um, what is that? That's when you meet a girl online and then it uh, turns out she's Jewish. <laughs> That's good. That was a good one. <laughs> and next up, I don't understand how in Major League Baseball all the fields are all sorts of different shapes and sizes. The Strohs have a giant hill in the middle of center field. The Yankees have a short right field. Then the Red Sox have the Green Monster. How is this possible? I understand that it would be difficult to ask an organization like the Red Sox to build a brand new ballpark, but plenty of ballparks have been built in the last 25 years and none of those are regulated either. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I don't know. Like to me, it's like this isn't the problem with baseball. It's everything else. You know, I don't think anyone's just like, oh, what if the parks were all uniform? They're like, why is this five hours? Yeah. And last but not least, you're Pete Carroll. You have beast mode in the backfield. You're in the Super Bowl. I don't care what the excuses are out there. You run him every single time from the one yard line. Easy, no brainer. I'll tell you what happened. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but. Um, <laughs> Uh, actually, Russell Wilson, uh, they had to pass because Marshawn Lynch, he wasn't in beast mode. He accidentally set himself to yeast mode. And <laughs> <laughs> that's where he turned into a loaf of bread. <laughs> I can see the ratings skyrocketing now. There you have it. Thank you, Liz Gonzalez, the incorrigible Joe Mackey, Anthony DeVito, John Starks. Tune in tomorrow night. We have a great show. Justin Long, the actor. David Deal, the uh, former left guard for the New York Giants. You're not going to want to miss that. Keep watching. <laughs> <laughs>